The story takes place in 1986, when I was just seven years old. I was very naughty when I was small and often did some dangerous things. No matter how many times my mother criticized me, I could not control my curiosity. It was a summer noon and my mother was cleaning the house. My sister went to a school activity, and I felt very bored by myself. During the last week, my father bought a second-hand closet because he thought it was cheap. The closet was made of very good wood, so it was very heavy. Because the closet door had some problems that prevented it from working properly, it was temporarily placed in the utility room of our house. In order to let the smell in the closet dissipate quickly, the door has been supported by a wooden board. At that time, I saw that the door of the utility room was open, which aroused my curiosity. Curious, I walked into the closet. Suddenly, the plank on the door fell off and the closet door was locked. To make matters worse, the closet fell straight down. It was so dark all around that I could barely see my fingers. The space inside the closet was quite small, and the lack of air circulation made me feel suffocated. My breathing became difficult and the scene made me feel extremely scared and desperate. I pushed and shoved desperately against the closet and my fingers were cut. The weight of the closet prevented me from moving it, and every effort went nowhere. The air became thinner and thinner, and my breathing became rapid and difficult, as if an invisible force was gripping my throat. My consciousness began to blur and my thinking became confused. I didn't know how much longer I could hold on. I put my head in my hands, tears mixing with the blood. Time became a blur and I felt like I was moving away from the real world. It was as if I could hear voices in the distance, the sound of my parents calling out anxiously. But this voice became more and more distant. Finally, my consciousness was completely swallowed by darkness. I could no longer distinguish reality from the dream world. When I regained consciousness again, I found myself leaving my own body. I was floating in the sky above the house. From this height, I looked down on the entire backyard and house, and could clearly see my mother's figure. My father had also returned home, and I could hear their conversation. Where is the son? The father asked the mother. Playing outside. Mother replied. Father looked out the window. I wished he could see me, I shouted, but my voice seemed to be swallowed by the wind and could not reach them. I watched my father anxiously, hoping he would sense my presence. My body was trapped in the utility room, but they didn't know that. I could only pray silently inside, Dad, please find me. They did not notice that I was floating over the house. I watched as my father turned away from the window and walked to other rooms. I felt disappointed and helpless. Although I couldn't communicate with them directly, I didn't give up. I decided to take a more direct approach to get their attention. I wrote on the glass of the window with my hand. I wrote my name and a message asking for help, hoping they would see it. They still didn't notice my presence. Just then, I felt a strong force pulling me backwards. I was traveling between universes at a very fast speed. This rapid movement made me feel extremely uncomfortable, and I could only close my eyes tightly. Time became blurred and I couldn't tell exactly how much space I had traveled. Eventually, I felt the speed begin to slow down gradually. When I opened my eyes, I found myself in a peaceful and beautiful valley. Surrounded by tall trees, the valley was flowing with clear streams. I breathed in the pure air, and it all made me feel calm. I noticed that the valley was filled with all kinds of beautiful wild flowers. Curious, I walked down to the river, which was glowing with rocks. 
I picked up a stone and I found that it was translucent and very soft, completely different from the stones on earth. They seemed to have a magical power that made me feel at ease and calm. When I touched the water. My clothes did not get wet, as if the water here was a magical substance. The water here is so buoyant that I lay on the surface and found myself not sinking, but floating gently on the water. This feeling is really very wonderful. I also found myself able to walk on the surface of the water. I felt the current gently embracing me and seemed to be dancing with me. I decided to dive into the water. I found that underwater I was still able to breathe freely, as if the waters provided me with endless power. In this mysterious underwater world, I saw various forms of fish. They shimmered and shined, forming a beautiful picture. Some fish had gorgeous feathers, as if they were peacocks in the water. Some fish have transparent bodies, like underwater elves. There are also some fish with gorgeous scales and streamlined bodies, just like a work of art. I chased them and admired their grace and magic. The river was also filled with all kinds of exotic plants. I was attracted by one of the plants, whose branches were covered with various attractive fruits. I plucked one of the fruits. The fruit had a very smooth appearance and gave off a tantalizing aroma. I couldn't help but put it into my mouth. It tasted very sweet and the taste of this fruit made me feel happy and satisfied. I saw that a new fruit was growing in the place where I had just picked it. It was growing fast in its original place. I was shocked and curious, so I picked it again. This time the fruit I picked tasted completely different from the previous one. It gave off a fresh aroma. I was delighted to find that a third fruit quickly grew in that spot. It was as if these fruits would never die. As I was about to continue tasting the fruits of other plants, a man in a white robe appeared beside me. His appearance took me by surprise and I stopped moving my hands. This man had bright eyes. He smiled and reminded me, son, the fruit is delicious, but you can't eat too much of it. I was surprised because he seemed to know what I was thinking inside. I stopped to continue picking the fruit. I looked at him and asked curiously. Why can't I eat too much? These fruits are so delicious, shouldn't we enjoy them to the fullest? The man smiled and said, Son, there is a limit to what the world can give us. Greed and excessive desire will often bring bad consequences. While enjoying them, you should also learn to protect and cherish them. Only in moderate taste can you truly experience their beauty. I nodded silently. I sat with him by the river. The man continued, Son, you didn't come to this place by accident. Every experience has its meaning. When you are lost, you need to learn to look within for guidance, because the answers often lie deep within yourself. I asked, can you tell me more about the wisdom of growing up? I want to be able to better understand myself and the world. The man smiled and nodded, then he slowly said, life is a journey, full of ups and downs and challenges. Don't be afraid of failures and difficulties, they are opportunities for you to grow. Learn to learn from them and persist in pursuing your dreams. When you are lost, you need to learn to listen to your inner voice. The inner heart is your truest compass and it will give you the right direction. At the same time, believe in your own abilities, face challenges bravely, and you will find that you have unlimited potential. This man finally said to me, Son, you have been here long enough, you must go back. I understood that he was right and that my family was anxiously searching for me. I looked at the man with gratitude and respect in my heart. I felt his wisdom and kindness as he gave me guidance when I was lost. 
I replied firmly, thank you for the reminder, I will return to my family. He pointed into the distance and a bright light emanated from his hand. The light was warm and bright. I walked toward that light. The light surrounded me and I felt a warmth. I closed my eyes, and it was as if I was traveling through a tunnel of time and space. When I opened my eyes again, I found myself back on earth. Surrounding me were familiar streets and familiar landscapes. I was suspended above the house. I saw that my father had finally found the utility room. He saw the closet fall on the floor and my mother rushed over to help. They struggled to lift the closet up. I could feel their tension and worry. Suddenly, a mysterious force pulled me back into my body. I breathed fresh air again. My father gently laid me down on the couch, worry and anger intertwined on his face. He told me to drink more water. I lay on the couch, my mind filled with confusion. My mother continued to clean the room as if nothing had happened. This frustrated me, and I longed for more attention and love. I wanted them to truly understand the fear and confusion that I was experiencing. I didn't intend to tell them about it at first. I knew I had a habit of lying as a child, and I was worried they would think I was playing another prank. However, when I went to the kitchen to get water, I saw the name I had written on the window glass earlier. I decided to tell my father what I had experienced. I took my father to the window and I tried to tell him what I had experienced. I described how it felt like I was floating in the air and how I had come to a strange valley. However, just as I expected, my father did not believe what I said. He frowned and said angrily, how many times have I told you, kids don't lie. He slapped me and I felt hurt and aggrieved. I felt very disappointed and frustrated. I truly hoped that my father would believe me and understand what I was going through. But the reality was harsh and he was suspicious of what I said. I am 65 years old and my fear of death is not as strong as it used to be. Recently, I have spent a lot of time watching videos and reading articles about near-death experiences. These videos and articles have had a great impact on me and have made me re-examine my experiences as a child. What I experienced as a child has always been confusing and frightening to me. The experience left me feeling overwhelmed and confused. But as I got older, I began to understand the importance of these things. As I grew older, I appreciated each moment more. I came to realize that the true meaning of life is not just the pursuit of materialism and merit, but the sharing of warmth and hope with others. This experience made me realize that each person has his or her own journey. Each of us will face death. But that does not mean we should live in fear. Instead, we should experience life in a more profound way, cherish every moment, be grateful for what we have and give back to the world with love.